Okay. An example of elliptic PDE is a Laplace equation, which is E square T dx square plus T square T dy square equals uh, zero. So for a problem like this, you need uh, two bound two well two boundary conditions for x, two boundary conditions for y. Needs four boundary conditions. Typically two for x and two for y. So in this case, um, you had some uh, kind of a material and you were trying to, um, what you're trying to do here is set the boundaries at different temperatures. And then the <clears throat> Laplace equation tells you the distribution of uh, temperature. So you're trying to solve for T as a function of X comma Y when you're given that the boundaries have that particular temperature profile. Okay, so let's say that this length is X equals L. This is Y equals H. Uh, we need to choose a grid size, just like we've done for other things. Choose grid size. We will need a grid for X. It will be L divided by, just choose some M number, M and then delta Y is equal to H divided by M. Uh, I think one. I think the way we've set this up, the formula is m minus one, n minus one. So let's if we can quickly check this. So an example would be if you have uh, delta x is zero point one. So you'll set x i would be delta x times i. And so you, if you want to go all the way to 0 0.5, you'll go 0, 1, 2, well, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. i would be 0, 1, 2, so on till 5. Okay, so that, so 5, 0.5 divided by 5 is 0 0.1. So that's right. So this is, I was just trying to verify, this should be a minimum, right? Because the way you get delta x equals 0 0.1 would be you'll take 0 0.5, you'll divide it by 5, which is n, and you'll get uh, m. So L divided by m, H divided by n is correct. This is right. Okay, so next is to discretize. Uh, d square t d, dx square. So we use a central difference. So that would be t i plus 1 j minus 2 t i comma j plus t i minus 1 j. Note that i is the index for x. X position. And then D square T, DY square is T. 
j plus one minus two ti comma j plus t j minus one divided by delta y square. J is clearly the index for the y position. Okay, now let's put it all together. I'm going to write put these uh, d square t dx square plus d square t dy square in uh, in this the equation I just showed. So we can write. T, it's a long expression. I plus one J minus T I comma J plus I minus one J divided by delta X square plus T I J plus one minus two T I comma J plus T i j minus one divided by delta y square equals zero. And now, just to make our life easy, if you assume that the grid size is the same, then you can write i plus one j plus t i. I'm just going to club the two t i j together. We have two tij here and the one in the, the middle two terms i plus one j i minus one j plus t i j plus one i j minus one minus four t i j equals zero. It's in other words, for this particular form, t i j is just the average. One simple average of four points. Now, what will happen for these problems? These are all these are boundary conditions, all of them, all four are boundary conditions. When you have boundary conditions, just like the boundary value problem, you'll always end up with a several simultaneous equations which you need to solve. Okay. So you'll always get, so you'll, what you'll do, you'll sweep through zero to i all the way to n, and then j you'll sweep through zero all the way to m, and uh, set up simultaneous equations of the form a t equals b and solve for t as uh, for t a slash p. Uh, this is when I say a slash p, that would be an octave of MATLAB. Depends on the size of the a and b. You could do some of them by hand, Gauss Seidel, uh, Jacobi method, but if it's big, then probably you want to just resort to a computer package to do it. Uh, it turns out that the matrix A, it looks something like this minus four, one. And then there'll be zeros, a lot of zeros. And then suddenly there'll be a one appearing, zero. Then it'll be one minus four, one. And there'll be zeros again, zero, one. So it'll be of this form, zero, one minus four, one, zero, zero, one, so on. The ones here, one here. 
Yeah, uh, you don't have to worry too much about this. Uh, we will actually solve the, when you solve the problem, we'll actually assemble it. So you'll see how this comes. Okay, uh, the best way to illustrate all this is to actually do a problem. So that's what we'll do next. Hey, uh, let's try to understand what this boundary condition really means. So we have a square domain. So I'll just draw a square. Okay, we know the equations of uh, the equation of this line is that it is x equals zero, right? Equation of this line is x equals one. Equation of this line will be y equals one. And the equation of this line will be y equals zero. Okay, so, so what this is saying at x equals zero to x equals one. So x equals zero, x equals one. Uh, and for any y, so any y over here, p equals zero. So p is zero, p is zero. So this would be, this condition is right over here. Okay, so look at x equals zero, this is this one x equals one, which is here. Y can take any value. So Y is any value on the Y axis. So those two are phi equals zero. Next, if you look at uh, the other two equations, so Y equals zero, this is Y equals zero. This is Y equals one. So for any value for X, P will be zero. So the other one is this one, this one, which is this condition. Here, P equals zero. Okay, this is probably not very important here because both are zero, but if you, if I told you um, P was one someplace and it was not zero other place, then you really need to figure that out uh, with perhaps a figure like this. Okay, now let's get started. So once we know that, and we know the equations, the equation is this. We can discretize. Uh, luckily, the dx dy is 0 0.25. So what will come out of this? So let me just write the formula without making any assumptions first. So the formula, which I'm going to disk the Poisson's equation formula has now been discretized. So that discretization would look like this. I plus one J minus two P I comma J plus phi i minus one j divided by delta x square plus phi i j plus one minus two phi i j plus phi i j minus one divided by delta y square equals minus, what was it, four minus four. You know, since delta x square is equal to delta y square square or delta x equals delta y equals 0 0.25. Uh, so we have delta x square will be delta y square equals uh, 0.25 square. We can write this as pi plus one j minus two. Let me pull things together. So phi i plus one j plus phi i minus one j plus phi i j plus one plus phi i j minus one minus four times phi i j equals minus four times delta x or delta y, whatever you like times. Um, now this is going to be four times 0.25 square so four times 0.25 square is, I think it's point, so 0.25 is actually one fourth, one fourth square. So it's going to be one, one fourth 
times one fourth times four. So this is going to be zero point two five. So let me take that to the next page. I'm just going to substitute the actual value here, minus 0.25. Okay, now since we need to apply this for grid points, I and J, let's look at what the grid points are. So X, I is I times delta X, I will go from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. I think that's about it. So let's see. So if you put the so delta x is 0 0.25. So 0 times 0 0.25 is 0. 0 0.25 is 0.25. 1, sorry, 1 times 0 0.25 is 0 0.25. Next for 2, 2 times 0 0.25 is 5, 0.75, and 1. So if you want, this is x0, x1, x2 x3, x4. Okay, similarly, y, j would be j times delta x, so j times delta y, j will go from 1 to, same thing, 4, 5, 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.751, which you can write as y0, y1, y2, y3, y4. Just four, sorry. Same. Yeah, it should be the same. Okay, yeah, I think it might be just be nice to visualize this, what's going on with respect to that uh, square I drew earlier. Okay, so these basically denote uh, what I need to do is I'm trying to evaluate what is the temperature, or in this case, not temperature, but phi at these grid points. So for example, this would be phi 11, phi 12, phi 13, phi 21, phi 22. I'm going to skip the commas just because this, it'll be cluttered otherwise. 531, 532, 533. Okay, so those are the grid points I'm interested in. And there's something I know about this problem. I know what is the value here, right? 4, 2, 4, 3. Oh, this would be 5, 0, 1, 5. You know, let me just put it in a different color. So we know the values there. So that's going to be slightly, let's say blue. 5, 4, 1, 5, 4, 2, 5, 4, 3, 5, 0, 1, 5, 0, 2, 5, 0, 3, 5, 1, 4, 5, 2, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5, 4, 4, 5, 0, 4. This one more so to go five zero zero five one zero five two zero five three zero five four zero. Now the good thing is we know the values at all these points. Okay, I drew it here. Uh, the value is just zero. So everywhere the value on the boundary is zero, so on, right? So you only need to find the values at those nine grid points in, in, in the middle. Okay, and that's what these equations will, will help us to do.
So I'm going to use this equation now. And that will like basically help us solve for those unknowns. These are the unknowns. Okay, so it's quite a bit of work to be done. Let's see. Copy. Okay, I need to sweep through I and J clearly. Uh, when I sweep through this, I only need to sweep through, I need to sweep I from one to three and J from one to three. Note that I goes from zero to four and J goes from zero to four. The reason I don't sweep, uh, I don't have zero and four is because some point of time I need to compute J minus one. So if I have, for example, um, anything less than one, so if I have J equals zero, then zero minus one won't make sense. There's no, not, there's no grid point at minus one. Similarly, if I put I equals uh, four, Right, there's something, or j equals four. Then there's four plus one five. There's there's no grid point which is five, right? We are limited to grid point of four. So I need to sweep only over these uh, values. So those three numbers for i and those three numbers for j, all combinations three times three is nine. So I need to write basically nine equations based on um, sweeping through these numbers. Let's do that. Okay, so let's start with i equals one j equals one. So I need to put i as one and j equals one in this equation. And uh, this, this is kind of a little, little bit hard to do it if, you, uh, if you're going to watch the formula every time and do it. So this is what I do. Some, it, I mean, you're, you're free to choose your own method, but this is what, this is what works for me. Uh, this is plus, 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 and then minus four times V equals minus 0.25. I just need to write the indices now. So what I notice is that uh, you can see that we have I plus one, I minus one, I, I, and I. So I is one. So all I need to do is I plus one is two. I minus one is zero. I is one, one, one. So it's two, zero, one, one, one. So two, zero, one, one, one. Okay, for J, we have J equals one. So J is one, J is one. J plus one will be two. J minus one will be zero. And J is one. So one, one, two, zero, one. One, one, two, zero, one. Okay, now some things are known. Anything with, note that anything with an index of zero, say so anything with an index of zero, for example, the index is zero here, is zero, right? Anything with, with the index of four is also zero because it's on this line. So anything which have four or zeros with it will be zero. So we go here and just cancel those things off. This will be zero, this will be zero. Okay, then we can do i equals one, j equals two. So I use the same trick, phi, phi, phi minus four times phi equals minus 0 0.25. So I put i equals one in the first index. So we have, so I just call out the numbers. So two, zero, one, one, one. Next is J is two. So two, two, three, one, two. Two, two, three, one, two. Okay, anything with a zero is going to go away. That's it. Next, I equals one. 
j equals three. So phi, phi, phi. So again, I, uh, I just say the numbers, the so first index. So I equals one, so two, zero, one, one, one. J is three, so three, three, four, two, three. Three, three, four, two, three. Plus, plus, plus. Anything with a four or a zero is zero. This will be zero. This will be zero. Okay, that just completes three. We still have six more to go. So I put i equals two, j equals one. Okay, now here's we can make our life a little bit easy. Uh, this and this is almost the same, is the same when it comes to the jth index. It's only different on the ith index, right? So what you can do is you can just, um, you really need to find, compute the ith index and then the jth will just copy from the top row. So let's see how that is done. So i is two. So again, I'm going to uh, put the first index. Two plus one, three. Three, one, two, two, two. Three, one, two, two. Two. Again, second index, instead of drawing from the formula, we see that j equals one here. So we just have to copy this down. So it's one, one, two, zero, one. One, one, two, zero, one. Okay, anything with a zero goes away. I equals two, J equals two. Okay, now we can actually, instead of trying to use the formula, we can actually have a shortcut here. We notice that we've identified one, uh, the, let me just put fee first. And then we'll, I'll show you a way to make this much easier to do. Okay, so now we see that We've already found a row, well, one formula with i equals two. So it should have the same ith index. So we just copy the ith index from here. So three, one, two, two, two. The i from this one. So three, one, two, two, two. Three, one, two, two, two. And then since j is two, there's already a, a, a formula which has j equals two. So that would have two, Two, three, one, two. So this is equal to minus point two five. Let's cancel off anything with uh, well. There's nothing with zero. So I keep it as it is. Okay. Then I can do this for two j equals three. So. Again, two, so just use that, uh, any of these two formulas to get the first index, three, one, two, two, two. And j equals three, we have it here. So three, three, four, two, three. Three, four, two, three. Okay, so we can get rid of this. That's about it. Okay, we have still three more formulas to go. I equals three, j equals one. Yeah, so we've not really done anything with i equals three. So we'll have to do this from scratch. So first index, we have uh, i plus one, i minus one, i, i, i. So three, i is three. So four, two, three, three, three. Four, two, three, three, three. And the j equals one, we can take this row. So one, one, two, zero, one. Two, Zero one. Get rid of this. 
and this. Then we can do i equals three, j equals two, phi. So identify column with three, so four, phi, 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 minus phi. So four, two, three, three, three. And j equals two would be two, two, three, one, two. Two, two, three, one, two. And then finally, i equals three, j equals three. E. Okay, so what we'll do here is same thing. Four, two, three, three, three. And j equals three would be three, three, four, two, three. Two, three. Some things cancel, like four, four cancels. Anything with a four will cancel. Okay, so what we have here would be nine equations, and those nine equations have nine unknowns, uh, and those nine unknowns are basically uh, these middle grid points. So you can assemble them just by uh, eyeballing. Uh, I'm going to just write the equation down, which will be a nine by nine equation. But it'll have lots of zeros, so which is a which is a good thing. So here we are. Minus four one zero one and then five zeros. Then we have one minus four one zero one then four zeros. And we have zero, one, minus four. Zero, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. Zero, zero, one, minus four. Zero, zero, one, zero, zero. Five, one. So you can see the pattern. One minus four zero zero one zero 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 one minus four zero zero one and we have zero 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 one minus four zero zero. Oh no, sorry, there'll be a one here. Interesting. Zero 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 zero. One minus four zero 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 one four. I think there's a one here. Okay, there's a pattern which you can observe in the ones and fours how they appear. It might be easier to just look at this. Uh, Uh, apparently it was right. I forgot a one. There's a one here. Oh my God, I forgot a lot of ones, sorry. Uh, ones like this. Uh, ones here. Uh, ones here. The ones like this, and there's one like this. Yeah, this should also be one. Wait, I think I may some. There's a one here. Ones here, 
looks symmetric. At least the way it's drawn, four, okay. And everything on the right side is minus 0.25. So this times P11, P12, P13, P11, P12, P13, P14, P15, P16, sorry. Oh my God, sorry, it should be, you should cycle P21, P22, P23, P31, P32, P33 equals minus 0 0.25, minus 0 0.25, minus 0 0.25, minus 0 0.25, and so on. Okay, so we need to solve for fees, and if you solve, obviously I've crunched this in a in a in octave. One one is point one five nine seven. It turns out that uh, P one one is actually equal to fee one three, which is also equal to P31 is also equal to phi 33. This saves you some writing work. Then we have phi 12 equals 0.1944 is also equal to phi 21, which is also equal to phi 23, is also equal to phi 32. Then phi I wrote one, three, two, one. I wrote two, two is point two zero eight three. Yeah, there's just three unique values. One zero point one five nine seven point two zero eight three one nine four four. Okay, and so the last thing uh, we're done solving it. But the last thing you want to do uh, so that so that you can show your solution, and I just copy from my notes, but you can take it later on. It's just putting it in a table, like the one we've done before. Uh, just put it from my notes. This just summarizes the solution. There's nothing new information here, but I would expect you to summarize the solution. That way it's easier for us to see what you did.